This is 5-Minute Power Platform, where I'm doing short experiments in Dynamics Flow, Power Ups, and more. And today, we're going to do a PDF approval routing system. In particular, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, have someone email in a PDF to a, kind of a forms inbox. And then we'll post that to SharePoint along with the data of who submitted it. And then we're also going to extract key data out of the PDF and display that in SharePoint. And we'll provide that to approvers so they don't have to go in and open up the PDF to know what they're approving. Then we'll route that for forms for or flow for approvals. And we'll pull in from there then the submitter's manager. And if the submitter's manager has their out of office set, then we're gonna look at their manager and provide that into flow. And then we'll route that to the second level manager, provide the input back to SharePoint on the approval status. So we're gonna use this uh, basic application for employment PDF. And you can see I filled in the fields with first day, last day. And so I've got one for person A, person B, person C, and so on. So we can tell that, make sure the right data is getting pulled out and into SharePoint. So here in SharePoint, I've configured this document library with uh, who submitted the form, the first name, last name, and company pulled out of the PDF, and then a place to put the approver and the comments and also the approval decision in approval, approve, or reject that comes from flow. So we'll start by creating our flow, we'll create a new flow from blank, and we're gonna set it for when a new email arrives. Now I've got a special inbox for forms, and so we're gonna log in, use the connector to go to the forms inbox, and that's the inbox we'll check. Now there's a couple key settings to set here, which is has attachment and include attachments. That means this will only fire if the email has attachments and it'll include the attachment data in the flow. So now we're gonna do an apply to each because there could be multiple attachments and we'll work on each one of them. And then for each attachment, what we're going to do is we're going to create that file in SharePoint. So let me set up SharePoint here. I'm in my Ignite site collection and I'm in my employment applications document library. We'll set the attachments name and then the attachments content. It says attachments, but really that's the one that's coming from this iteration here from the supply to each. So now we're going to use the plum sale third party connector to parse out the data from the PDF. I tracked a couple of different third party connectors and this is the one that I found the most easiest to use. It needs an API key. And so what we'll do is we'll come over here to plumsale.com slash documents. You can create a new account. I've already got one. So I'm going to sign in here. And then when we click on documents, you'll see there's API keys listed on the left. Add a new one. I'm going to call this one five minute power platform. And that's going to give you a key. Copy that and we'll set up our connector. We'll call it plum sale, paste in the key. And now we're good to go start using plum sale with our free trial. So I'm going to give it the attachment content. There's no password on this PDF. So we're good to go. Let's give this one a test. And so I'm going to save it here. Uh, and we need to rename it, I guess. And we'll give it a test here. I'll perform the trigger action. And that's going to be emailing in my forms inbox, a sample PDF. So we'll come over here to Outlook, address it to forms, give it a subject line, and we'll drag in one of those PDFs and hit send. Come back over here to SharePoint. Our test should start flowing here in a second. And we see that it's got found all the attachments. It's iterating through the one attachment that we have, and it should uh, create that in SharePoint. If we go look at SharePoint, there's our document. So it looks like it populated properly. And now we come back here and we, we open up the get form from PDF. We can see the JSON that was returned from that connector. And this is the data it extracted from the PDF. And this is the real reason we ran it at this point. And so what we'll do is we'll copy that. And then we'll, we can add on a parse JSON from the data operations connectors. And then from parse JSON, we'll bring, give it the body of the uh, document. And we'll use that sample payload that we copied to create a, a, an example JSON schema. And now that data is available to us. So we can go into the SharePoint connectors and update item. We'll give it our document library and uh, the, uh, the site name, employment applications. Tell it which one to update, which item ID. And now we can start populating these columns of data extracted from the PDF so that our approvers don't need to open up the PDF to see the first name, last name, and company name in this case. So that they're all gonna come out of the PDF. For the submitted by, we're gonna use the, um, the from address, so whoever emailed this in. Now we're making a key assumption here that the only people that are gonna emailing from this are in our company or in our Active Directory, which may be a so-so assumption, but this is really just to demonstrate that we could pull from different areas. So now let's run this test again, and this time it should run the test, and when we go back into SharePoint, we should see the data from the PDF pulled out and updated into SharePoint. So over in SharePoint, we see that the first name, last name, and company were all populated. That data came out of the PDF and now is available in SharePoint. Now let's create our second one. This will do the approval. These could have been one flow. I decided to break them up into two. So we're gonna use the trigger when a file is created in our document library, and that's gonna trigger us then to start the approval route. So we'll set this up with our night site collection, our employment applications library. Uh, now I found that uh, I couldn't get all of the columns out, even if I had that all columns selected. And so we're gonna do a second step here 
and we're going to get file properties again. And that seemed to dependably get uh, all of the properties we would need here. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Office 365 users connection to get the manager of the person that submitted this document. And so uh, we'll use the get manager uh, function and we're going to pull the submitter's email right out of uh, what we said in SharePoint. And the second thing we want to do is we want to find out if this manager is, has an out-of-office set in Outlook. And so to do that, we'll use the Office 365 Outlook connector. And there is a, uh, an action called get mail tips. And that will provide the actual out-of-office message if one is set, or it'll be blank if there isn't one set. And so we'll put in the, uh, the manager's email in here, and then out of that, we'll get the mail tips. And we can then uh, set a variable on that. So next, let's set two variables. We'll start by uh, setting a variable for the approver's email. And this way, as we, uh, if we have to pull out a second approval, second, appro second level approval manager, we'll be able to populate that there and keep track of it. So we'll call this the approver email. It's going to be a string. And we'll set the value to be the current mail of the manager that we have. The second variable we'll set is, is the approver available? Right? Are they in or out of the office? And so we'll set this to a Boolean. And then for the value, we're going to take the value of the out of office message and we're going to check if it's empty. And so to do that, what we'll do is we'll set an expression and we'll just check if the value of that message is empty and we'll set the to a Boolean. So next we're going to do a condition based upon that value. And so if the approver is not available, so if that message is populated, then we're going to look up their manager, the second level manager. So we'll say the condition, if the approver is available, approver is not available is true, then we'll do, um, Office 365 users, look up a manager, and we're going to then check for that manager's manager. Now, just to keep these straight, we'll rename this one second level manager. We're going to populate it with the current approver's email. And then what we'll do is we'll um, then set the variable for the uh, approving manager to that second level manager in this case. So now we've got the data we need to do an approval. So let's add an approval step here. Now, it doesn't matter what approval type we choose because we only have one approver, so we'll just pick one of these. And then we'll give it a title. We'll bring in the first and last name of the person with, that submitted the application, or the person in the application. So these are extracted from the PDF. And then we'll put in the, uh, we'll assign it to our approver email. So that'll be whichever one flowed through, either the primary or the secondary manager. We'll put in some details here. And this, again, is data that got pulled from the PDF, first name, last name, and company name put in a link back to SharePoint here and a descriptive title like click. And then when we're done, we're not going to send an email back to notify anyone. What we'll do is we'll just update SharePoint again. So we're going to do an update item here and then we'll put in the results of the approval here. So choose our Ignite uh, site collection, our employment application document library, the ID of the thing that we need to update. And then we'll put in the, uh, the uh, approver, approver ID, so the final approver by putting in their claims here. And so that's gonna be the uh, approver user principal name, put in the comments on the approval, and finally we'll put in the approval response. So approve or reject. And those will all get populated back to SharePoint. So we'll run another test by creating another email. We'll create an email to my forms inbox, give it a subject and drag in one of those PDFs and hit send. Come over here to uh, SharePoint and we should see our new one drop in with the data extracted. So now we come over here to flow. We can watch it flow through. It's looking up the manager, found the manager. We can see their out of office message right there. And so we can see our variable is initialized with their email address, but is there available? They're not, they're not available, it says false. So here we can see we looked up their manager, set the variable again, and now the approval is set to the second level manager, Amy Allsing. Here we are in Amy Allsing's inbox, click approve come through we we'll see the approval flow all the way in and now it's populated with the approver's name and the comments okay so now let's go back into our first level approver uh, Trisha McMillan and we'll turn off her out of office message so come in here to automatic replies turn it off and we'll do another one so we'll send something else into our forms inbox put in another PDF hit send here in SharePoint, we should see it drop in here in a minute. There's the, there it is with all the data extracted. We come back into flow and we see that as it went through, it said that the uh, approver is available. And we see we, it skipped over that conditional because it didn't need to look up the second level manager. And now we should see Trisha McMillan has an approval in her inbox. 
So one thing to note, uh, those manager lookups can fail if Active Directory doesn't have a manager specified for the person. So we're going to set this approval to go even if the step before it fails. So even if that second level manager fails because there isn't one set, we'll go to do the approval based on the first level manager. And in reality, we would set the same sort of check for the first level manager lookup to verify that it's a PDF coming in and also to make sure that we can find the uh, submitter by their email um, from, from the email set from Outlook. But this is just one example of some of the error checking you might want to look at putting in if you are going to do this in production. Those, this was a simple demo of a couple things I've been wanting to play around with. One is extracting data from a PDF and using that to uh, populate SharePoint. And the other one is making a decision based upon the out of office status of an approver or somebody that we looked up from, out of, from Outlook. So I hope this was useful to you. Thank you very much for watching.